After the Rogue One A Star Wars Story trailer dropped, there has been one shot in particular that has puzzled me and a large majority of the Star Wars fan base. I am of course referring to the shot in the trailer where a dark robed figure is shown kneeling in front of what appears to be a back to tank, similar to the one Luke was placed in in Empire Strikes Back after his encounter with the Wampa on Hoth. To begin, I feel it necessary to explain what a back to tank is. A back to tank is a tank where extremely injured subjects are submerged into Bacta for long periods of time in order to heal grievous injuries. These injuries oftentimes would lead to death without the submersion into the tank for various amounts of time, depending on the severity of the injuries that were inflicted. I do have the theory that the individual that is submerged in the tank could be Supreme Leader of the First Order before his rise to power and master to Kylo Ren, Snoke. At first thought, this theory may sound outlandish, but I ask you to remain with me over the course of this video as I attempt to explain the thought. To begin, we must start with what we know as fact, then build upon that. We know Snoke endured major injuries as evident from information we received by the filmmakers of The Force Awakens and upon seeing the horribly scarred and disfigured face of Snoke. These injuries we see on Snoke could facilitate the need for a back to tank long term. We must also be aware of when Rogue One takes place, which is of course the time period in which we see the tank. Rogue One takes place potentially mere weeks before the events of A New Hope. Another very important thing to note is where the shot of the figure in the tank is located. Based on two very important figures in the background which will come into play later, and based off of the layout of the room, we are in an Imperial run location with someone of great significance. One of the few but very vital pieces of information we have about Snoke is he witnessed both the rise and fall of the Empire, and that he appears to have detailed information on various highly classified ongoings concerning the Empire and its leaders. This is mainly highlighted due to his statements to Kylo Ren concerning the Empire being highly effective at promoting progress throughout the galaxy, and because of the statement he made to Kylo about sentiment being the thing that toppled the Empire and the legendary Sith Lord, Darth Vader, Kylo's grandfather. These comments do not seem to come from someone who has an outside eye looking in. No, these are comments from someone who has had contact with the parties involved and detailed knowledge of the events in question. What I am suggesting is that Snoke is the one we see in the back to tank during the Rogue One trailer, and that he witnessed both the rise and fall of the Empire while recovering from injuries inflicted upon him by unknown circumstances at this point in time. Allow me to explain myself further. As mentioned earlier, in the background of the shot we see two red robed figures, instantly recognizable as Imperial Royal Guards. Now, this is probably the most significant evidence when concerning this theory, and in order to understand it, we have to grasp the function of a royal guard. The royal guards answer solely to one person, that being Emperor Sheev Palpatine. This means if Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader, approached a royal guard with orders, they would not follow as they only answer to one. The royal guards were solely founded by Palpatine for the purpose of conducting his personal affairs and to accompany him everywhere he went unless specifically ordered otherwise by a direct command from the Emperor himself. To quickly address this, yes, oftentimes royal guards were deployed as assassins, but due to the nature in which they are standing in the background of the shot in question, they are clearly not conducting an assassination attempt. This information leads me to believe that the figure in question in front of the tank is Palpatine. I do not believe Palpatine is the one in the tank because never before has he been seen requiring such treatment. Some may point out the instance in Revenge of the Sith where Palpatine's own force lightning was reflected back on him by Mace Windu scarring him that may have required him to use such a tank. To counter this, I would say the lightning reflected back on him is theorized not to be what scarred him, but something else, referred to as dark side degradation. Dark side degradation is what often grants dark side users their yellow eyes, and in some cases deteriorates their bodies. The dark side is a flame that burns very bright, but takes a toll on the individual submerged in it, similar to the way when if the flame of a candle grows brighter, the wax begins to fold and collapse in on itself. Also, in Revenge of the Sith, after Palpatine's duel with Mace, he was seen to be fine afterward, walking around and even calling the Senate into office and later engaging with Grandmaster Yoda in yet another duel. I also do not believe the person in the tank could be Vader. While yes, Vader did receive injuries that would facilitate the use of such a machine, Vader had a similar but personalized meditation chamber that conducted fixes to his suit and allowed him to go periods of time without his mask. Due to this fact, Vader did not utilize a back to tank. Along with this, I also want to address the most simple piece of evidence, though although not unique to the Emperor, solely the attire of the figure does fit the robes of Palpatine. The puzzling but highly intriguing part about the back to tank shot is the fact that we have now established that the black robed figure in question is most likely the Emperor, but he is displaying something extremely uncharacteristic of that individual. He is kneeling. 
There are only a few characters in the whole of the Star Wars universe that would ever require the Emperor to kneel before them. Here is where we get into the speculation part. My theory is that the Emperor knew Snoke, and vice versa, likely far before the rise of the Empire, whether Snoke was his past master or another dark side user in the galaxy with prominence. I theorize the Emperor may have given Snoke his injuries and caused all the scarring and disfigurement we see on Snoke, but ultimately chose to keep him alive as a confidant and sort of mentor in a very contorted, bizarre way. I predict that the Emperor in the scene we are witnessing is approaching his old friend for guidance while he is being maintained in the back to tank. After the death of Palpatine on the second Death Star, this would allow Snoke the perfect opportunity to break free and seize control of the Empire, having his only competition eliminated and making him privy to information not granted to others beforehand. This would fully explain where Snoke was during the events of the original trilogy and why he knows as much as he does. It would also explain why he had such ease reincarnating the remnants of the Empire into the First Order. I now want to address the inevitable argument that Anakin Skywalker, formerly Darth Vader, destroyed the Sith once he was redeemed by his son, Luke, on the second Death Star. To this I would say that Snoke is stated to not be a Sith, and that Vader did indeed destroy the Sith on the second Death Star. Just because the Sith are destroyed does not mean the dark side is gone completely. I am now going to step out of the Star Wars universe and convey why they would want to make the individual in the tank Snoke from an out-of-universe explanation. Lucasfilm and Star Wars is now owned by Disney and being conducted very similarly to the way the Marvel films are being managed due to them being owned by the same company. What Marvel has done in the past and what I believe Star Wars will do is build anticipation and place hints for upcoming projects and movies prior to their release. It is my assumption they are doing the same thing here with Snoke. I do not think Snoke will have a major role in Rogue One and may even be limited to a single scene if he does appear, but that it will be used to build on further films without bogging down the story of Rogue One. This scene may also serve as a highlight of the film and a holy crap moment for audiences familiar with Star Wars, giving fans of Star Wars a very similar reaction that Marvel fans get during end credit scenes of those films. Though I would say it has the potential to be even more shocking since some audience members are familiar with Snoke after The Force Awakens. So there it is, keep in mind this is just a theory supported by evidence and at this point it is not fact and should not be taken as such. I hope even if you disagree you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining, that's all I'm here to try and do. If you have any more evidence or insight into this or anything else Star Wars related, feel free to comment down below or follow me on Twitter where we can discuss it more in depth. Thanks so much for watching, and may the Force be with you.